Thank you, Senator Bud. Senator Kelly, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to our witnesses for being here today. Dr. Johnson. I appreciated uh, the focus of your testimony on the Chips and Science Act, which I uh, helped negotiate, and uh, particularly appreciated your focus on the science and economic development investment in the science portion of that bill. As you noted, while we were able to provide advanced appropriations for the Critical Chips Act programs, there are many other new programs created that are going to rely on an annual appropriations. Now, I come from uh, 15 years at the space program where we see this firsthand, but doc Dr. Johnson, can you expand upon your testimony and explain how investments in basic science and innovation can yield economic growth, even if we can't always foresee exactly how those investments will pay off? Uh, yes, Senator. So as, as you know, this was a big revelation to the U.S. actually from the 1940s, and it came out of the, the, the war effort, accelerated by Sputnik and, and then the creation of the, the space program. And what we've come to understand, and now there's a lot of data on this, which is summarized in my testimony, we have a, a whole book on this topic, is that when you put money into basic science, you generate a whole range of ideas, many of which you don't... Uh, expect to, to, to see. And then you, if you have a process of channeling that into specific applications, the space program would be one public purpose program, but there's many other commercializations, including everything that's brought to you, digital computers and the internet, for, for example, and mobile telecommunications. That, that machinery that we have in the United States is actually pretty strong, the private sector piece. But the private sector does not invest enough in basic science because it's all about the spillover effects. It's all about all those unexpected effects, it's all about being able to you know, suddenly invent a vaccine because you've got a new disease you had never heard of before, but you have that capability, and so on. And so the federal commitment to science is, is fundamental to our economic prosperity, but, but also, Mr. Chairman, to our national security, because this is what we've been very good at. This is what's propelled us forward in many ways, and this is what China has learned from us and what they're doubling down on now. So we have to invest more just to stay up with them. I think we can even better than is that. It, is it true? I, I was always of the understanding that the private sector is not going to invest in something that has a return on investment that goes beyond five years. I don't know if that number is is the, the, the number you go, go by, and that's why it's up to the federal government to be making these basic science investments because private sector just can't, can't do it if they're not going to see a return on the money. It, it can be about time horizon. I think much more is about spill, spill effects. So the Human Genome Project, for example, was shopped around some private venture capitalists in the 1980s. They turned it down because they said, look, great project. You're going to create a lot of knowledge, but we won't be able to capture the value of that in, in ourselves. It'll be general knowledge. So the Human Genome Project was funded, as you know, by the federal government. Massive success, 300,000 jobs uh, created, tremendously strong industry, powers a big part of our economy, and produces uh, drugs, uh, therapies, and vaccines that, that are essential to every part of everybody in, the, in this country. Right. But he needed that public impetus, and this, of course, is what the National Institutes of Health does really well, but we need more of that, and we need more of that across more sectors. Well, somebody who was always trying to sell our space program, what I would, you know, stress is it's not, you know, it wasn't about, like, a product like Velcro. It was about creating industries, industries that no longer existed. I mean, our aerospace industry here in the United States has been a become a big part of our economy. Um, and that didn't exist before, you know, the 1960s, really. So um, from a national security perspective, what opportunities, I want to connect this to the CHIPS and Science Act, so what opportunities are we missing by not fully funding the CHIPS and Science Act? Um, because this could be really a, a long overdue and historic investment in American research and innovation. Oh, it's a breakthrough piece of legislation, absolutely, Senator, that, that, that taps into what was done previously in the 40s and with the space program, but goes much further. And it is a little bit painful that the appropriation has not followed through. So Congress recognized the opportunity and I think agreed on a very broad bipartisan basis, but you've got to put some money into it. Then, Senator, I think the question becomes what next? Where are the next sectors where we want the breakthroughs? What's the next equivalent of satellites, next equivalent of the, of the internet, next equivalent of mobile communications. There's a lot of opportunities in biomanufacturing. There's a lot of opportunities in other parts of, of semiconductors. There's opportunities in critical minerals, for example. There's a long list, and, and I think Congress needs to engage with that. And I think you should be thinking about CHIPS and Science Act 2.0 after, of course, you fund the, th the first version. Yeah, I had other, you know, some questions that led to, you know, STEM education. But I, I look at basic science and STEM education as being sort of like kind of in the same bucket. You know, this is like the, the, the seed corn for you know, it's the catalyst for what grows the economy, both education and investment in science. So thank you.
the National Defense Education Act, I remember in 1958, and NASA, the two big reactions to Sputnik. They were both brilliant moves by Congress, Senator. So I'm sure we can do it again. Well, thank you. And Mr. Chairman, I have a couple of questions for the record. Uh, we'll accept those, Senator. Thank you very much. Thank you. Senator Schmidt, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.